Remembering. Have you ever given any thought to it? How much the Bible says about it? It says quite a bit. Um, there's over 200 references to forgetting or remembering. Um, I was reminded of this from Psalm 103. I was uh, given an opening at our church the other day, and I was reminded in Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5, the psalmist says, O give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders. Glory in his holy name, let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength. Brothers, I'm in the wrong psalm again. <laughs> I say again because I think that happened when I was doing my opening as well. <laughs> All right, let's look at Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Forget none of his benefits. The idea here of forgetting and remembering, it's the same thing basically, right? It's two sides to the same coin. We remember some things, we should forget other things. Have you ever thought about that? What is it that we should remember? The Bible tells us to remember quite a few things, but at the same time the Bible says to forget other things. And so in our Christian lives we should be remembering and we should be forgetting all at the same time. And it's important that we do that in the right way. Throughout the scripture we have the idea of remembering. I was just, I wrote down a few. Like I said, there's over 200 examples here of, of this word, remember or forget, used. If you remember back in Exodus 13, the Passover, what was that for? That they would remember what happened there. That they would remember their deliverance. They would remember all that God had done in bringing them out of Egypt. So they were told to, to do this yearly feast, the, the Passover. They were given the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles to remember what? They're wandering in the wilderness. Uh, that they were looking for a home, that this wilderness wasn't their home. To remind them of that, to remind them of where they were going, to remind them of all that God had done. Again, uh, you look at the Ark of the Covenant, what was in there? It was supposed to be a reminder to them. You had the law in there, the tables of stone, you had Aaron's rod, you had the manna. Reminders of all that God had done for this people. While they, while they wandered in the wilderness. Joshua 4, 7 so, is the story there of the crossing of the Jordan. And when they get to the other side, after they crossed on dry land, what did they do? They set up some stones as a reminder that they crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. How could you ever forget that? But yet the Lord says, set these stones up to be a reminder. 1 Samuel 7, 12, after deliverance from the Philistines, they set up a stone called it Ebenezer. Hitherto the Lord hath helped us. Again, how could they forget? But the Lord said, set this stone up. Set up this Ebenezer to be a reminder of what the Lord has done. Psalm 103, we already read it. Forget none of his benefits. Proverbs 3, 1, my son, do not forget my teaching. In other words, remember my teaching. Proverbs are full of that, full of exhortations to remember and to keep, do not forget. In Matthew 16, uh, Jesus rebukes the disciples for forgetting the feeding of the 5,000 there. Have you forgot what I've done? How could they forget that? 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul gives us the Lord's Supper there, tells us. Well, Paul doesn't, but he gives us some teaching there on the Lord's Supper. He says, do this in remembrance of me is what the Lord said. Remember this. Do this as often as you eat and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. A reminder there of the sacrifice of Christ. Philippians, Paul says, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Forgetting is a good example of what we're to forget. All those things in the past that were sin, where we stumbled, where we fell. Forgetting all of that and pressing forward to that mark. The high calling. Second Peter, uh, Second Peter one twelve and thirteen. Second Peter one nine. Second Peter three one and two. 
Peter there is reminding the church. He's reminding them of things that they know, things that he's already taught them, things that they need to, to keep a hold of so that they can walk in this world. Jude, Jude 5 is the same thing there. Jude is reminding the church of things that they know. So those are a few examples where those words are actually used, remind and forget, but then just the idea, just the theme of remembering is everywhere in Scripture where those words aren't even used. Uh, Psalm 119, 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What's he saying there? Remember my word, right? That's what he's telling us. Remember these things that you know. Put them on your heart. Remember them. Proverbs 7, 3, Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablets of your heart. The commandments of the Lord he's speaking of there. So again, he doesn't say remember, but he's telling us to remember. Remember these things. Philippians 3, 1, to write the same things again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. He doesn't say remember, but he says, I'm reminding you. That's what he's telling us there. Paul is telling us the same things that we've heard, the things that we should know. And so, those, again, those are just a few examples. I just picked out a couple, but it's everywhere. Why, does it, why, why? why do we have this? Why are we continually told to be, be rem remembering these things? Well, obviously, because we're a forgetful people, right? We look. We look at the, the Bible. We look at the Old Testament. I mean, can you imagine forgetting what God did? How is that possible? How does Israel forget what God did in Egypt? One of the great nations at that time, he crumbles. He brings them to nothing to bring his people out. The plagues, the plagues, I mean, do we really believe that that happened? Yes, we do. And if you were there that day, in that, in that time, how could you ever forget that? But yet, they did, didn't they? They forgot it. The spies, when they went into the land, oh, the giants are too great and mighty. This is, a, I mean, these people, we can't, we can't get in there. How, have you forgotten what God just did for you? You crossed the Red Sea. You were delivered from Egypt. Pharaoh and his armies were slain. You didn't lift a finger. <laughs> and yet you can't possess the land. They forgot. They forgot it all. So we are a forgetful people. We forget from one week to the next, one day to the next. I, I used to be a teacher, a high school teacher. And you get done with one chapter, and you're on to the next, and what do you got to do? You got to go back and teach the chapter you just finished because the kids already forgot it. If you're a teacher, if you have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just there for a moment. Unless we rehearse these things in our minds continually, they're gone. We constantly have to be reminding ourselves of the truths of God's word or else we'll forget. What are some dangers of forgetting? about doubt. When we forget, it leads to doubt. The spies, the spies doubted the Lord there. Psalm 73, this is one of my favorite psalms here. If you know it, the psalmist here is writing and he's, we're not going to read it all, but he's just saying how terrible his life is and how the wicked are uh, just prospering. Our, our brother mentioned it the other day. The wicked are prospering and woe is me. He says in verse 13, Surely in vain I have kept my heart. I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence. For I have been stricken all day long and chastened every morning. Here he is. How can he say those things? He's forgotten. He's forgotten God. He's forgotten what he's been delivered from. He's forgotten who he is. He's forgotten everything. And his eyes are on the wicked and they're prosper. And how great they're doing. Surely I've done all this in vain. He's doubting everything. But then if you go down to verse 17, he says, Until I came into the sanctuary of God, and then I perceived their end. What happened? He was reminded. He was reminded of God. He was reminded of where they're headed and where he's headed. Came into the sanctuary. His eyes were put back where they belonged. He remembered and he moved on. He pressed on with God. So doubt is one thing that forgetting leads to. 
Another one is discouragement. Psalm 42, 5 and 6. Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. O oh my God, my soul is in despair within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of the Jordan and the peaks of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Why is your soul in despair? Why are you discouraged? Why are you cast down? Have you forgotten God? Have you forgot his promises? Have you forgot his blessings? Did you forget about that stone that hitherto the Lord hath helped us? Have you forgotten these things? To forget the Lord, to forget what he's doing, to take your eyes off of him, and to put it on your circumstances, is to bring you to despair. Remember. Remember God. So, doubt, discouragement. When we forget the reality of the world we live in, it renders us useless in the fight. We're in a war. Do we remember that? Do we remember what, what we're really doing here? Our brother talked about the armor. Are you putting on the armor or are you forgetting to put that on in the morning? Are you forgetting to put that on daily, moment by moment? Are you forgetting you're in a battle? Are you forgetting that you're just a, a pilgrim here, just passing through? Are you forgetting these things? Are you forgetting who our adversary is? My brother preached a long time ago on Satan, our adversary, and all those things that he is. He's the accuser of the brethren. Do you remember that? He accuses us to God, he accuses us to one another, and he accuses us to ourselves. If you forget that, you find yourself like that brother that Josue was talking about. Why'd you ask him to pray? What about me? He did whatever. I'm doing all right. You forget. He, that's an accusation towards your brother from Satan. It's a wrong mindset. Do you forget who you are? We sing that song when Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. You know, that's really not accurate. There is no guilt within. Satan accuses us and tells us there's guilt within. But there isn't really any guilt because we're what? We're justified. We've been, we've been redeemed. We're innocent. We're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Do you forget those? Do you forget that Satan's going to bring all those things against you? Do you remember who he is and what his goal is? So when we forget, we find ourselves going down a wrong path. Doubt, despair, discouragement. Maybe anger, bitterness towards our brothers, towards our sisters. Believing the lies of Satan rather than remembering the truths of the Bible. Those are three things. Three things there in the dangers of forgetting. I'm sure we could list many more. If we went around the room, we could, we could have a whole list there of some of those other dangers that are out there. But there's just a few, and those are real dangers. That's enough that it should cause us to remember that we don't want to be a forgetful people. What are some things we should forget? How about our sin? Do we dwell upon our sin? That's, that's sin, right? We confess our sin and we move on. That sin has been dealt with. Christ has dealt with past, present, and future sins. So we forget our sins. We move on. Forget it. What about God? As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sin from us. Right? If God's forgotten them, shouldn't we? Amen. Hebrews 8.12, I will remember their sin no more. Are you remembering your sin or are you forgetting it? You ought to be forgetting it. Laying it at the feet of the cross and moving on. Pressing on toward that high calling. So we forget those things. We forget those failures in our past. We forget, we forget all that. We learn from it. We move on. We repent. 
and we press on with the Lord. How about sins against us? That's a big one. That's a really big one. Unity in the church, brother, is disturbed when we remember our sins against one another. Forget those things. Love covers a multitude of sins. Do we believe that? Do we put that into practice? Forget those things. Forget those sins that your spouse, when she sins against you, when, when he sins against you, when your children sin against you, children, when your parents sin against you. We've got to forget those things. We've got to move on. You can't hold on to those things. Satan will seek to use those things. Remember that. Remember, he's going to stir up those emotions. He's going to stir up those feelings. Well, you did this last year, too. You really didn't mean it, that you were sorry. Lies of the devil. Forget those things. Put them behind you. Move on in love with one another. That's just a couple things. A couple things that we ought to forget. Again, we can't go, can't go over them all. What are some things we should remember? I've got a longer list here. What are those benefits that the psalmist is talking about? Again, this is a small list. It's a long list, but it's small. Who we are. Do we remember who we are? We are a new creation. The old man is dead. The old man is gone. We've been given new life, a new birth, a new name. Do we remember who we are? We're saints. We're not those dirty, wretched sinners. That's been, we've been changed. That's, that's in the past. That's who we were. In Christ, we're a new creation. Do we remember where we've come from? Now this, is a good, this can be good and bad. If you remember where you've come from in a good way, what the Lord has done for you, yeah. that's a blessing. That's an encouragement. So we remember what the Lord has done. Psalm 40. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. Remember that. Right? Remember what he's done for us. He set our feet upon a, 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 some solid ground. Brought us out of the pit. Brought us out of, from destruction. Do we remember what the Lord has done for us? Where he's brought us from? Do we remember where we're headed? We're headed to glory. And it's a sure thing. It's a guarantee. Christ has earned, earned us that reward in heaven. It is a guarantee that we will get there. Those of, those of us who are Christ's, who are in Christ, who are united with Christ, we will, gain, we will gain glory one day. Do you remember that? This is not our home. We're just passing through. Philippians 1, 6, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Remember that. How about this one? Uh, the reign of sin, the power of sin, and slavery to sin are no more. Amen. We've been freed. Sin has no, no control over us, no power over us. Christ defeated sin. And since we've been united with Christ... It has no rain. It does not rain in our lives any longer. Romans 5 and 6 tells us all about that. What has been accomplished for us in the death of Christ and our death in Christ and with Christ there are being united with him in all of those things. Do you remember that? You don't have to sin. You're free from sin. You can live to God. The grace of God in our lives is more powerful than sin ever was or could be. And so... Remember that. Remember our union with Christ. How about our justification? There's a benefit. What does that mean to be justified? 
Do you know what that means? If you don't, you need to find out because that's a blessing. I don't have time to go into all that this morning. <laughs> we are not guilty. We have been declared innocent. We are righteous in Christ. We have been justified. We've been delivered from hell, from death, from judgment, and from the wrath of God. Delivered from all of those things. Remember that. Do you remember who God is? Who is God? Who is this God that we serve? Do you know who he is? Do you know his attributes? He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He is love. All of these things. We could, we could list all of those attributes of God. Do you remember those things? Do you remember that he is sovereign? That he has ordained whatsoever comes to pass? Do you remember that when you're going through hard times? When you're going through difficulties? When you're going through trials? The Lord brought those. This isn't just chance. This isn't just, yeah, I'm just going through something here, got no control over it, and God didn't see it coming. No. This was brought by the Lord for our good. Do you know that? Do you remember that? Because if you remember that, you can praise the Lord through that trial. You can move on with the Lord through it all. And you can be encouraged in it. Knowing our God is sovereign. And all of these things are according to his plan and his purpose. The love of God for us, do you remember that? I mean, that's, I remember when that hit home to me one time. I mean, that is a blessing to consider that God is our Father and loves us. This isn't just some being way out where we can't really experience him. The love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Do you remember that? Do you know that? Have you experienced that? Do you remember that in those difficult times? God loves me. He's my father. He has my good in mind. How about all the deliverances of God in the past? There's a great encouragement. The answers to prayer. Do you remember God's answering prayer? Do you remember his delivering you from temptation, from trials, whatever it might be? Have you, do, have you set up those stones of remembrance? When you get through that hard time and you look back and you say, yeah, God was right there with me. And you set that stone up. I'm going to remember this. I know I can trust God because he got me through here. And that was a hard, hard time. Do you have those Ebenezers in your life where you can look back at the goodness and the mercy of God and the providence of God in all things? Remember. Remember his deliverances and his helps. Do you remember God's work in the lives of the saints? Now there's an encouraging thing as well. We were talking about that some last night. God's work and some of the saints that have gone before. Our brother reminded us of some of those things. What a blessing to remember those things. They made it. They're in glory. God got them right where he wanted them. Just how he wanted them to get there. Do you remember those things? All those biographies that Charles and Mona bring every year, do you read those? Because those are a blessing. To see God's work in the lives of the saints of old. To see him moving because of his use, using them in the lives of the lost. Conversion. Revival. That's a blessing. To remember God's work in times past is a great help. Do we remember that we've been reconciled? We've been reconciled to God. Our reconciliation in Him. And then the last one I have, we've already said, the forgiveness of God. Do we remember that? That He has forgotten our sin, that our sins are forgiven, truly forgiven. They're gone. 
I remember Bo Brother Bob Jennings talking about our sin being gone. He likened it to a dead cow on the farm that was there one day. They loaded it up on the truck and it was gone. <laughs> it's not here anymore. It's gone. That's, that's the reality. It's gone. Our sin is gone. Do you remember that? Those are just a few, a few things to remember, to encourage you in this life. If we're going to remember something, though, what, what do we have to have? We have to know it first. Okay? What do you know? Do you know your Bible? Do you know what these things mean that I've mentioned? Do you know what justification is? Do you know what redemption is? Do you know what sanctification is? Do you know what it means that we've... You go on and on, right? Do you know what these theological terms are? Know them, because they're great truths. If you don't know them, you can't remember them. If you don't know what God has done in the lives of others, you can't remember those things and be encouraged in them. If you don't know his promises... What good are they to you? You're like Christian in Doubting Castle. What happened? He got there in Doubting Castle. He's getting beaten. He's getting abused. He's getting ready to die. And he says, hang on, I remember I got the key of promise. Let's get out of here. But if you don't know you've got it, you can't remember it. Know the word. Know the promises. Remind yourself of these things. Rehearse them. Don't just know it this month and then forget it next month. Know it this month. Rehearse it next month and the next month. Day after day after day. Remind yourself of these truths. Know them. Rehearse them. How do we do it? Well, we memorize the word, right? That's one way that we can remember these things is we memorize the word. Are you memorizing your Bible? Because if you're not, you're not going to remember. It's work. You realize that? Remembering is work. It just is. We complain about, oh, I'm too old or it's so hard. Too bad. <laughs> Nobody told you life was easy, did they? Memorize. Grow up. Memorize the Word of God. Memorize some definitions. Memorize what these things are. How about some note taking? Do you take notes? Do you remember what the brothers preached for the last few nights? A few days? Do you remember what was preached last year? If you got some notes, you can remind yourself of those things. You know, I was encouraged that one year down there at Turkey Hill with brother whoever. And you can flip back and be like, that's right. That's what he preached on. And yeah, it's a blessing again. He said some good things there. Are you diligent with these things? Are you diligent to remember? It's not that we just don't remember. Just to, oh, oh now I'm going to all of a sudden remember everything. You have to be diligent to remind yourself. Diligent to remember. To memorize. To go out of your way to remember what the Lord has done. Reading good books, there's a good way to remember God's mercies. How about journaling? I put that down here. I'm not real consistent in that, I have to confess. Donald Whitney talks about it in his book, uh, Spiritual Disciplines. That's one of the disciplines, journaling. Do you journal? We think that's for little girls and their little, journal, little, little journals, right? But no, that's a spiritual discipline, his brother tells us, and it's a good one if you think about it. When I do journal and when I do go back, I remember. Yeah, I remember that time. I remember going through that. And then I can write in there, yeah, the Lord answered that prayer. The Lord did this for me in that situation. It's a good reminder. It's a good reminder of where we've been, things we went through, and how the Lord helped us. Are you doing those types of things? If we're going to be encouraged, if we're not going to doubt, if we're not going to be led into despair, we've got to be doing these things. Christian life is one of work, of diligence, of discipline. Remember. 
Remembering God's work in the past gives us confident hope for the future. Do we all agree with that? A confident hope for the future. Knowing what he's done should give us confidence, should grow our faith. Seeing God answer prayer, seeing God do this or do that, should give us confidence as we move forward. I wrote down here again, setting up Ebenezer's in our lives. That's part of the work of remembering. Then I put down here a note to us pastors. Are we reminding the flock? That's what Peter was doing there in 2 Peter. Nothing but a bunch of reminding. I'll read you a couple, a couple verses here, 2 Peter 12 and 13. Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and have been established in the truth which is present with you. I consider it right as long as I am in this earth, in this, earth this earthly dwelling, to stir you up by way of reminder. That was part of part of Peter's ministry was to remind as pastors that's part of our ministry is to remind the church to remind the flock as the flock do you sit out there and say man I've heard this before this guy's telling me the same thing he told me already what's the deal give me something new he's telling it because it's important it's because of what the Lord gave him to give you and you need to hear it you need to be reminded Reminded of these truths. So that's part of our ministry is reminding. And it's part of your responsibility to be reminded. We both have a, we all have a part to play there. Another way to be reminded is to be at the church meetings. Where's your priorities? Do you agree with God that you should be at the church meeting? Because God said you should. Whether you agree with him or not, you should. Do you agree with God? My brother talked about that. Or have you got your own ideas? Do you have your own plan? You got your own way to be reminded and encouraged and taught. I don't need what God told me. I'm doing fine. Well, let me tell you, you're not doing fine if that's your attitude. Agree with God and get to the meeting. Be reminded. Be encouraged. Grow and mature how you're supposed to in the church. Use your gifts in the church. You can't use your gifts in the church if you're not there. Anyway, go too far there. <laughs> Agree with God and be reminded at the meetings. Be at the meetings of the church. One last note here then. To the lost. God will not forget your sin. He's forgotten mine. And he's forgotten all of us who have put our faith and trust in Christ. Our sins are gone. He's forgotten ours. He will remember yours. All outside of Christ, their sin will, will come back to them one day. It will be rehearsed right in front of them and they will be condemned. You will be condemned one day for your sin if you're outside of Christ. Let me encourage you, implore you, admonish you, look to Christ. Go to the Savior of sinners because your sin will find you out one day. Amen.